Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolotech and today Apple released iOS 26 beta 9. iOS 26 beta 9 is available to developers and iOS 26 public beta 6 should be out soon, maybe by the time you're watching this video or possibly tomorrow if there's additional issues. Now this is the first time since 2018 we've actually had a beta 9, so it's been a long time since we've seen that and there should be a good amount of fixes. This came in at 1.07 gigabytes on my iPhone 16 Pro Max and was about the same size on other devices. However, I have seen some that had 9 to 10 gigabyte install files. Along with this, Apple also released iPadOS 26 Beta 9, WatchOS 26 Beta 9, along with macOS 26 Beta 9, tvOS and HomePod OS 26 Beta 9, VisionOS 26 Beta 9, and some older updates for macOS as well. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the build number and talk about what's new. So we'll go into settings, then we'll go to general, then about. As you can see, the build number is 23A5336A. And this particular build is the third build we've had with an A at the end. I would expect the release candidate next, but we'll talk about that in a moment. However, we did see some other builds with watchOS 26 beta 9, for example, that went backward in the build number. So that's a bit odd. Now we did not have a modem update in this update, so no change there. We're still on the same one. So if you have maybe an iPhone 16 Pro Max or 16 Pro, you would have version 2.04.06. As far as new features, well, this is going to be more of a refinement update. So going into things such as the control center, you should see is a little bit smoother. And I've noticed this all throughout. Now you may not see this on older devices as I've seen online. However, just opening it up, locking and unlocking generally feels faster. You can see there, everything seems super smooth. It's not perfect yet by any means. And there's still some visual glitches throughout, but overall it seems like going into things such as the camera, going in and out, back into settings, things seem to be much faster. So in general, it seems to be better that way. However, one thing they haven't changed is the dock. So if we take a look at beta eight, that's on the left, I have on the 15 pro max beta nine on the right here, you can see the dock padding is still very large. So I'm not sure why they're doing this, but it is something that's definitely noticeable, especially in beta nine, they may have made it even a little bit bigger. So that's a little odd. I don't really see any changes with liquid glass. I went into music, checked it in light mode and dark mode, and I don't really see any changes here. So you can see I had the same album set and everything. And I was just looking to see if maybe some of the translucency or transparency changed, maybe some of the animations swiping back and forth here. I don't really see any changes there. They both do the same sort of thing, have the same sort of reflection refractions rather. And then everything else seems to be about the same as you move around. Maybe one of the icons, some people have mentioned that maybe the widgets show more of that reflection, but I'm not re really seeing this any more than I did on beta eight. One thing that has been updated today though, is the developer app. They've finally added updates for the new design is almost here. They sent out an email as well, and it talks about liquid glass, watch videos about liquid glass, icon composer, and more download UI design kits for Figma and sketch, get answers to frequently asked questions from WWDC 25 group labs on the forum. And you can see all of this here. So we're just a week away from the iPhone event. And of course the launch of when Apple's going to tell us when the launch of iOS 26 is, but we'll see the RC after that as well. Now, as far as other things, well, bugs and bug fixes, well, the dim wallpaper bug with the photo shuffle seems to be fixed. If we go to the lock screen here, you'll see it still sort of dims when you have notifications, so they're easier to read, but you'll see here, the overall look is pretty much the same, but again, very smooth. I'm not seeing any differences here as far as the overall look, just general smoothness improvements. Something else they've fixed has to do with the volume slider. So maybe if we turn this down, We'll go and play some music here, turn it up a little bit. Sometimes it wasn't appearing or working properly. Now it seems to be working as you would expect. Some people have also seen some odd visual glitches, specifically when they're on the clear icons or maybe the tinted icons. So if we go into clear, sometimes if you go into messages, you'll see if you go in, sometimes it would glitch at the bottom. And thanks to JP Productions for sending this in, I'll show you what that looks like. So you can see here on the screen, there's some visual glitches some people are seeing. So sometimes it looks like that. We'll close out of that. And then again, throughout the OS, sometimes icons disappear. You'll see they're drawing in as I scroll there. And now my widget disappeared. So that's for the invites. And if I switch back, it seems to reappear. So definitely some bugs that need to be worked out and maybe some touch bugs as I'm scrolling here, I'm noticing that. So it's possible that we're seeing some of that. 
Also, if we go into our settings, go up to Wi-Fi, you'll see the animation and liquid glass is not on the button. It just sort of jumps in and out. So we don't have any of those nice new animations like we do on Bluetooth, for example. You'll see it just fades away and goes away. And then we have that icon here. It's missing from Wi-Fi. And so that's something that isn't showing up. And thanks to Shrey and TechBush Pro for actually sending that in. Now on Apple's public facing release website, if we go to the release notes, if we take a look here, there isn't a whole lot more that's updated from beta eight to beta nine. So we have 52 categories of resolved issues and 39 groups of known issues in beta eight. We had 51 groups of resolved issues and 40 groups of known issues. So some small changes here and there, but basically only two changes. Everything else is things that have been there before. So hopefully they resolve this before the RC, but it looks like they've got a lot of work left to do if these are all current. However, I would imagine they need to update the notes as well. As far as other releases, well, Apple is going to push an update in the EU to reduce iPhone 12 RF levels to bring them into the Blocks Health Standard. It's similar to the same update we saw a while ago in 2023 in France, and this could be either with iOS 26 or possibly another iOS 18 update. We don't know it at this point what specific update will have it. Also a new store opened in India today. You'll see Apple Hebel opens this Tuesday, September 2nd, and that's open now. So if you're in this area in India and you're watching this video, let me know what you think of the store overall. It looks like it's a pretty standard Apple store, but very nice. So again, let me know if you went there, if they maybe gave you anything different that you can get as far as collectibles or anything like that when you entered the store for the first time. Now we're just one week away from the Apple event and you'll see here we have this odd touch glitch so it's not responding at all. If I refresh, some people are saying that it's slow and scrolling. I'm seeing a little bit of stuttering, but not much. But again, this is very odd for a late beta, but you can see the Apple event is just one week away where we'll see the new iPhone 17 lineup for the first time. So we'll see the iPhone 17, the 17 air. I have a dummy unit of it here. It should be a super thin iPhone as well as the 17 pro and 17 pro max. So 17 pro. 17 pro max dummy you can see what they look like and it gives you an idea of what to expect with this giant camera bar but let me know if you're planning to pick one up of course it's said to have 12 gigs of ram in the pro models so that will help with apple intelligence and overall just maybe operating system smoothness but in general it should be a nice update again look if i refresh it sort of locks up i can't scroll up so definitely some odd bugs here that we need to report and feedback as far as releases, well, if we don't have another beta this week, which would be a surprise, but we could see it since we're in new territory now, I would expect iOS 26 RC or release candidate as soon as the 9th. So typically after the Apple event, we'll have the release candidate and then a public release either on the 15th or 16th of the following week. Of course, we'll see iPhone 17 pre-orders typically on the Friday after the event. So that could be the 12th and then iPhone 17's launch on the 19th where you can pick them up in the store. So that seems likely, of course, Apple could change this. And then also iOS 18.7 seems to be in the works and we could see that maybe iOS 18.7 RC this week, or maybe we won't see it until after the Apple event, but either way we can expect that fairly soon. Maybe that will have the EU fix in it for the iPhone 12. Now, if you're wondering if you should install iOS 26 beta nine, well, if you're on any of the iOS 26 previous betas, then definitely install it, report feedback as needed or iOS 26 beta six, whichever one you're on. And then if you're on iOS 18.6.2 and thinking about trying it out, it seems pretty stable, but again, it's not going to be as refined as iOS 18 has had a whole year to have the software refined, be completed, updated and everything else. So iOS 26 early on usually is a little bit buggy, probably by 26.1, it will be much better. Now, as far as the overall performance, well, I shared that a little bit. Generally, it seems to be good, except Safari locking up here, which is very odd. So again, if I refresh, now I can scroll again. So very odd bug there, but scrolling and things like that seem to be fast. ProMotion seems to be smooth generally, and I would expect it to be ramping up and down to 120 Hertz as expected. As I showed, it feels very fast going into different applications, going into folders, everything feels smooth there until it doesn't. So there's odd issues here and there. The overall heat is fine so far. It's a little bit warm as it's still processing in the background, but generally stays fairly cool. We'll talk more about that in the weekend follow-up video, but definitely an improvement over the previous betas. And as far as battery life, well, again, this takes a few days to measure, but if we take a look at it, battery health, I'm at 94% with 316 cycles. And usually my battery is pretty bad, but if we go to battery usage yesterday, I used 86% of my battery and only had two hours and 21 minutes of screen active time 
three hours and 28 minutes of screen idle time. It's been a pretty bad beta as far as battery life. Hopefully it improves greatly now that we're at beta nine. So today I'm at 62% and we're at one hour and 51 minutes of screen active time, 35 minutes of screen idle time. So again, we'll check this in the weekend follow-up, see if it's improved by then. When it comes to storage, we'll take a look at that. So it's using 19.81 gigabytes on the iPhone 16 Pro Max with iOS 26 beta 9. Beta 8 on the 15 Pro Max is using a little bit more. So Apple Intelligence is only using 6.27 gigabytes and iOS is 13.54 gigabytes. So it looks like it may be refined a little bit more. Maybe they're refining the code base using up less space and making it a little bit better. But again, we'll have to use it for a few days, see what it's like and see if it improves. When it comes to benchmarks, I did run them initially on this and initial benchmarks came in at 3,309 for single core, 8,297 for multi-core. I would expect this to improve a little bit over the next few days. Again, we'll check it in the weekend follow-up, but compared to when we ran it the first time last week with beta eight, it's definitely a little bit better, at least for the multi-core single core is well within the margin of error. So again, we'll check this in the weekend, see if it improves. So that's everything with iOS 26 beta nine, more of a refinement update. I'm sure we'll find a few more things here and there. And if we do, of course, I'll cover them in the weekend follow-up video going over anything new that we found in addition to what we've already talked about. If you've found anything else though, I'd love to hear from you in the comments below. And of course I'll link this wallpaper in the description like I normally do. If you haven't subscribed already though, please subscribe. And if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like. As always, thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time.